This video is going to be called Are Women Not Capable of Being Strong Leaders in Society? Now, we have a lot of, well, according to most women, we have few strong leaders in society that are female. And, you know, I don't really agree with that, but we are going to explore this topic today. So we're going to start with the word capable. Capable. This word describes having the ability, fitness, or quality necessary to do or achieve a specified thing. Leadership. This word names the action of leading a group of people or an organization to give guidance, direction, authority, to manage a group of people. Now we won't get into the role that women take in the corporate ladder, but we will rather address this in a general sense life particularly. So, are women generally capable? Yes, they are capable of leadership. The question is in what kind of leadership? Over what type of body can she wield this sort of authority? Apart from the fact that using this authority over mankind or men specifically comes off as disrespectful, even if a woman has the best of intentions, there is a thin line between striving to uphold this authority in a neutral and pleasing manner as opposed to constantly resorting to manipulation which most women naturally tend to do, even unknowingly. No matter how much the feminine ego may covet leadership, it is spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and psychologically incapable of maintaining the state of being enjoyable to all people involved and free of consistent exploitation of all people involved in a relationship. Leadership is a serious position that burdens the person that is leading. It requires a diverse mental capacity, specifically one that can undergo many frustrations. And this state does not support or feed a healthy feminine nature and mind. It cultivates a rigid and stressed woman who doesn't flow with ease as she should. A strong woman is molded by a masculine man. A strong woman is therefore molded by a leader. The leader is who contributes to her life and makes her a better leader of the things that God has given her to watch over. And it makes her a better leader to other women. She develops the attributes necessary for a balanced set of life skills from a masculine man. A woman, on the other hand, if given a chance to lead a man, will mold a man into someone she despises. And a man will mold a woman into someone he will continue to love. And I say that she will mold a man into someone she despises. When, when I say that, I mean the end result 
of the leadership will be catastrophic for the relationship. You see, women generally know what they want, but sometimes they're blind to what they really need. And if a woman, if it was up to a woman to mold a man and to be a leader of a man, she would particularly thinking, you know, she would mold him in a way that she thinks would be acceptable to her. In essence, what I'm trying to say is, long story short, she will end up with a girlfriend, someone that she can relate to, and not a male partner a strong masculine partner and though many women think that this is what they need it's not so it doesn't work out in the end okay and when we look at a man molding a woman into someone that he will continue to love. Most of you that are well acquainted with the good book will, no, will see this overshadow in the story of Christ and the church. You know, the story of Christ and the church is mentioned a lot in the Bible. The problem is we always use it against male characters. Oh, well, the man must love the church just like Christ gave his life for the church. But if we really look at this closely, we will see that our relationships really mirror this with Christ and the church. In fact, your male partner he would be in the position of Christ if you are the church. And you will see that in the church today, the body of Christ, we are particularly molded by Christ. We call this process sanctification. And in this process, he teaches us what is acceptable to him and what is not. In the same way, your male partner has to train you to know what is acceptable and what is not under his wing. And this is how it works. This is how the transformative power of a relationship works. And this is how the transformative power of Christ works in the church today. A strong woman, therefore, is a teachable woman. In this way, we are leaders. We resonate when we receive. And it is important to be able to receive the gift of wisdom when it is given from a trustworthy and viable source. The good book says, those of you who wish to be leaders must serve. And here we are leaders walking in the strength of cheerful service to others. This is our life. This is our life as women and it is a very very respectable position so are women capable of being strong leaders in society absolutely but in terms of being a masculine figure of leadership that kind of strong leader is not possible. And 
that is my perspective on the matter. So be blessed and have a good day. And remember, you, woman, have been given a special and respectable position and you can be made even stronger and more resilient under the wing of a masculine leader. Goodbye.